What if there was a spice sitting right in your pantry that could actually hold secrets to a longer, healthier life? For millennia, cinnamon hasn't just been about adding warmth and flavor to our food. Ancient cultures from the Egyptians to the Chinese revered it as a powerful medicine, using it for everything from warding off infections to soothing digestion. But now modern science is looking for something even more profound. Cinnamon might actually influence the pathways that govern how we age. Exciting research suggests that certain compounds within cinnamon can help regulate blood sugar, tamp down inflammation, and even switch off the longevity genes, mimicking some of the beneficial effects of practices like fasting and exercise. So today we're going to go on a journey into the science behind cinnamon and uncovering the safest and most effective ways to potentially harness its longevity boosting power. But not all cinnamon is the same, and for health there is a critical difference. So let's look at the types of cinnamon first. So let's have a look at cinnamon. You might think that all cinnamon is the same, but there are two main types you'll commonly encounter. On the left, we have Ceylon cinnamon, often called true cinnamon. Notice how these sticks are made up of multiple thin, delicate layers, almost like cigar rolls. It has a lighter color and a subtly sweet, more nuanced flavor. The vast majority of Ceylon cinnamon comes from Sri Lanka. On the right, we have cassia cinnamon. These sticks are notably darker and thicker and have a much bolder, more intense flavor. Cassia is more budget friendly. However, something to be aware of, cassia contains significantly higher levels of a compound called pumarin, up to 1200 times more than Ceylon, which in high doses can potentially be harmful to your liver. Just a single teaspoon of cassia a day pushes you close to the recommended safety limit. So if you're someone considering incorporating cinnamon into your daily routine for potential benefits like blood sugar management or longevity, those levels can add up. So if you're planning on using cinnamon regularly, opting for Ceylon variety may be a better choice due to its low coumarin content. So what is the science behind cinnamon? Cinnamon exhibits several notable biological activities. It functions as a potent antioxidant, effectively neutralizing harmful free radicals within the body. Furthermore, its anti-inflammatory properties can contribute to reducing chronic inflammation, a key factor as we age. Beyond these effects, cinnamon demonstrates antimicrobial activity against certain bacteria and fungi. Research also indicates its potential in blood sugar management, suggesting a possible role in diabetes care. Preliminary studies have also highlighted potential anti-cancer and cardiovascular protective effects. The mechanisms underlying these benefits are attributed to specific bioactive compounds present in cinnamon. Eugenol and various polyphenols are key contributors to its antioxidant capacity. Cinnamaldehyde, the primary compound responsible for cinnamon's characteristic aroma, plays a significant role in its anti-inflammatory actions by inhibiting inflammatory pathways such as NF-kappa-B and by mitigating oxidative stress. Notably, cinnamaldehyde also promotes the production of nitric oxide, which supports cardiovascular health. While preclinical studies involving animal and cell models have shown promising results, human clinical trials have yielded mixed outcomes. So as always, more rigorous long-term research in human po populations is necessary. Let's now examine in greater detail some specific areas where cinnamon has demonstrated clinical benefits. We will begin with its effects on metabolic health. This discussion will be based on this review, efficacy of cinnamon supplementation in glycolipid metabolism in T2DM diabetes, a meta-analysis and systematic review published in 2022. While this review focuses on patients with type 2 diabetes, we hope that it would also be relevant for healthy people. This slide represents the result of a meta-analysis, a statistical technique that combines the findings of multiple studies. 
let's break down what we're seeing here. First, the results for fasting glucose. On the left, each row represents an individual study included in the analysis. The horizontal bar associated with each study shows its 95% confidence interval. This interval indicates the range within which the true effect of the treatment is likely to lie. The vertical line at zero represents the point of no difference between the treatment and the control group. In this case, since we're looking at fasting glucose levels, we want to see a result to the left of this line, indicating a reduction. If a study's confidence interval bar doesn't cross this line, the result is considered statistically significant, meaning it's unlikely to be due to chance, and the p-value is less than 0.05. The dotted vertical line represents the weighted mean effect across all studies. Here it's located to the left of zero, suggesting an overall reduction in fasting glucose. The diamond shape at the bottom represents the overall 95% confidence interval for the combined results. Because this diamond doesn't cross the zero line, it confirms the statistically significant reduction in fasting glucose. The standard mean difference is minus 0.54, indicating the magnitude of this reduction. It's expressed in standard deviations. Essentially, this shows a significant decrease in fasting glucose levels. The meta-analysis also found a significant reduction in HbA1c, a measure of average blood glucose levels over, over the past 90 days, with a reduction of 0.63. And HOMA IR, this is a measure of insulin resistance with a reduction of 0.8. Fewer studies included this measure, but the result still indicates a significant decrease. Here are the graphs of the meta-analysis for the main figures in the lipid panel. LDLC reduced by 0.55, HDLC increased by 0.57, and triglycerides reduced by 0.6. So in summary, cinnamon had a positive effect on many of the health markers associated with metabolic health in patients with type 2 diabetes. Ongoing research is also looking at the neuroprotective effects of cinnamon. Cinnamon's bioactive compounds like cinnamaldehyde can cross the blood-brain barrier, reaching critical areas vulnerable to neurodegeneration. Here, it attacks Alzheimer's at the root, disrupting amyloid plaques, inhibiting the phosphorylation of tau proteins, and even activating autophagy to help clear cellular debris. More generally, it also calms brain inflammation, neutralizes free radicals, and shows surprising anti-anxiety effects in animal studies. In both preclinical and clinical trials, cinnamon has shown improvements in memory and learning according to a systematic review published in 2024. So how about cinnamon and longevity? Well, there is this study showing an extension of lifespan through mTORC1 signaling and autophagy. Unfortunately, it is in C. elegans. But it does work through inhibiting mTORC1, which leads to the downstream effect of activating autophagy and extending lifespan. In this case, in a dose-dependent way, up to 20%. Let's look at the doses that we used in these human trials. So when it comes to managing blood sugar in individuals with diabetes, studies have generally found an effective range of powdered cinnamon to be around one to six grams per day. To put that in perspective, that's roughly equivalent to half a teaspoon to two teaspoons. For instance, one compelling study demonstrated that consuming just one gram of cassia cinnamon daily led to a notable 10 to 12% reduction in fasting blood glucose levels over a three month period. That's a significant impact from a relatively small amount. However, it's crucial to be aware of the safety limits, particularly with cassia cinnamon, which is the most prevalent type you'll find. Cassia contains a compound called coumarin, while naturally occurring, excessive intake of coumarin can unfortunately be harmful to the liver and kidneys. Because of this, 
the generally recommended maximum for long-term cassia cinnamon use is about one teaspoon per day, or roughly two to three grams. Interestingly, Ceylon cinnamon, often referred to as true cinnamon, contains only negligible amounts of cumarin. This makes it a safer option at higher doses, with studies suggesting it's well tolerated up to six grams per day. Adding to potential confusion, cassia cinnamon is not only the most common type available to consumers, but also has been used in approximately 90% of the clinical trials. Beyond the concern over cumarin and the possibility of allergic reaction in some individuals, cinnamon generally has a very good safety profile with minimal reported side effects. A couple of important points to keep in mind. Firstly, most clinical trials divide the total daily dose into two or three small servings, often taken in conjunction with meals. Secondly, these trials frequently utilize standardized extracts of cinnamon, often provided in precise 500 milligram capsules. This may contrast with using regular cinnamon as a powder at home, where measuring can be less exact. Cinnamon was not top of my list when I was thinking about healthy spices from India, but now that I've looked into it, I'm quite impressed. My investigation began when Mrs. Modern started using cinnamon as an antihistamine, as well as potentially helping with histamine, it may also have immunomodulatory effects, which is why we've opted for Ceylon cinnamon powder. Although cinnamon does, does show some promising results in human trials, it's also important to note the inconsistencies with not all studies showing significant outcomes. Furthermore, the majority of research has focused on populations with diabetes, so it's not entirely clear how much these benefits will translate to a healthy population. However, overall, it seems like cinnamon is a low cost, low risk and tasty option that might help in multiple ways, supporting metabolic and neurological health while also reducing inflammation and acting as an antioxidant. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well.